Hi everyone, Ted Wyman here with the first edition of On the Rocks of the 2021-2022 season and I'm joined by a very special guest today. He is Ben Hebert, a two-time Olympian and a gold medalist and he's about to play in the Olympic trials for I can't even I'm not even sure how many times Ben but uh, as the lead for team Kevin Cooey the Olympic trials mm -hmm. getting underway in Saskatoon on Saturday and Ben who else would have a better perspective than you on what a unique event this is this Olympic trials is uh, what can you share with us about how different it is from just your everyday event well obviously uh, you know you don't get any uh there's no high fives and uh, prize money for second or third or fourth place. Like there is in other events. If you have a, if you have a good event and you know, do you go to a grand slam or an event like that and you finish, you know, third or fourth and you have a great week and you lose a semi to a really good team. It's still a, still a pretty good week. You get a paycheck and you played well and you look to build, but uh, you know, not a lot different than uh, you know, the Briar experience of second, third and fourth isn't really a, a juicy spot to be, you know, it's winner take all. And, and you're playing to represent Canada uh, on the international stage, and obviously in this this case the Olympic stage. But anytime you get a chance to wear the maple leaf, uh, you know there's never any opportunities where where two Canadian teams go. So these are kind of the, you know, the high stress events. They don't come around um, too often. Obviously the Olympics every four years. That's why it makes it so difficult to win. But uh, anytime you're trying to represent your country, especially in Canada, uh, curling. You know, huge honor and a very, very tough event to win. So we're going to have to be at our very best. As a guy who's won the Olympic trials twice, once with Kevin Martin in 2009, once with Kevin Cooey in 2017, what is the key to success? It's, it's obviously a very difficult thing to do. Yeah, I think consistency is going to be the key um, for our team this week. Um, you know, there's obviously some games out there that you see on the schedule that are, you know, winnable games if you play well. And then there's other games that you're going to have to go out and play really, really good. And if the other team plays really, really good, it could be, it could be a flip of a coin. You know, there's a, the talent levels that high. So I think coming into this event, you just want to have a nice steady pace of good, consistent curling. You know, you don't want the highs to be your, your best super, super games and have a, a big bottom out low game. You'd like to kind of be really consistent the whole week through. I think you're gonna need some breaks for some other teams. You know, take advantage of some misses. Um, no one's ever won this event by the other team not missing shots. So certainly you're going to need a break or two to go your way. Maybe a couple of big shots, game winning shots by Kevin, which, uh, you know, we like that. We like that he's thrown them for our team, certainly. Um, and then, yeah, you're going to uh, you're going to have to be mentally and physically prepared. It's a long week. It's a mental grind and it's a physical grind, too. So, you know, we're pretty fortunate that, uh, you know, we have some good experience us on this team of how to win the event. But uh, we still got to get out here and, and walk the walk and do it again. So uh, we're looking forward to the challenge. Curling is such a social sport as well as being a great competitive sport. Um, is there a difference in terms of this event, in terms of that uh, camaraderie? Because it's a pretty cutthroat deal here, like you said. I mean, one team's going home happy and everyone else is going home with nothing. Yeah, I think so. But I think all the players, um, you know, that we're playing against here, like we're all, it's a small curling community, right? And we all have... Uh, uh, mutual respect for each other and what we're all trying to accomplish and you know I don't think any of the crows would look at it as as they want to win to to take away from somebody else uh, by any stretch of the imagination you know they all want to win for their own reasons and um, you know for their them and their teammates and then I feel the same about us so no there's not going to be any cutthroat stuff from our end and the social side of it I mean I think early in the week maybe a little bit more loosey-goosey but as the tension rises and the games get a little more intense you know, I think you'll probably feel that out on the ice as well. So I was talking to Mark Kennedy uh, a while back and uh, he, he said, I asked him if the fire really burns in him more because of how things went in 2018 in Pyeongchang, where you guys finished fourth. Uh, he was then a member of Team Kui. And he said that it doesn't burn with him too much. Um, he's already won a gold medal before and he really appreciated the, the experience of being an Olympian again. But he said, ask Ben Hebert that question. You might get a different answer. So what answer am I going to get? <laughs> oh, Mark. Um, no, I mean, it doesn't, it, I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I don't burn more or less uh, to win the Olympic trials than I have in, you know, in 2009 or 14 when we lost the semi and 17 when we won again. I mean, I think that's why, uh, you know, you know, we play this game still. Why I play is obviously for these big events to be able to, try to recreate those moments and get those feelings of, 
glory and you know pressure anxiety all the cool stuff that comes with these big events right it's it's a big part of it um but no winning or losing that olympics doesn't change the way i feel about this olympic trials at all um like i said yeah we wish we would have came home with a medal in pyeongchang you know we had a good week we played well kind of one brutal end one brutal game and and that was unfortunate but you know it doesn't make me less or more hungry um you know, to win this go around. If we win this go around, it's a completely new team and it's going to be a completely new experience. And, you know, I think, you know, like Mark says, if you would ask me that 10 years ago, maybe my answer would have been a bit different, but uh, I'm maturing here and then understanding the perspective side of the game and winning the Olympic trials, you know, I've been, this is my fourth. I've won it two out of three times. And the other time I was in the semi. So uh, I don't have a lot of complaining to do about this bond spiel. And, you know, I'm not going to start now. <laughs> no kidding. And you guys um, obviously have played in many, many big games uh, throughout mm -hmm. your career and you've played with different teams. Um, what is it about Team Cooey that you like so much? Um, I think, you know, everybody knows Kevin's one of the biggest shot makers in the world, especially when the game is on the line. But you obviously have to have a good chemistry as well. And uh, what is it that works really well for you guys? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we have a great mix on our team, obviously having, uh, you know, well, first and foremost, you know, having Kevin Cooey is our biggest strength. You know, I think he's the best shot maker in the world. You know, he can make shots that no other, no other players can make, never mind skips. And so to have him on your side, that's a guy you want. You know, he always seems to, you know, he's a guy that can uh, uh, raise a level uh, in big games and big events. And, you know, we're hoping for that Kevin Cooey this week. If, if he can get into that mode that he gets into, he's scary good and nobody wants to play us when he's going like that. Obviously that fresh blood of, um, of BJ uh, never being to an Olympics. So having that extra kick and that extra fire there. And as much as we want to go back to the Olympics, myself and John have both been there twice, you know, it's hard to fake uh, uh, the urgency of someone that's never been to the games. And so having BJ there, to, you know, give us that extra kick if we need it to focus up, uh, you know, he's a total pro he brings that. And then obviously the shot making experience of John Morris. I mean, who else would you want besides the only person to win two gold medals in the curling world on your team? Right. And so, you know, he's another guy too, that maybe, uh, you know, going to these smaller events, he's, he's tough to get up for, but, but there's no one else you'd rather have on your team at events like this uh, than John Morris and his experience, talent shot making. So, you know, we're prepared. We've put a ton of work into this uh, these last five months and we've had a really good season so far. And I think we're trending in the right direction. So, I mean, if we play good, um, it's not a matter of if we'll be there at the end of the week. If we play good, we're going to be there at the end of the week and have a chance. And that's all you can really ask for in this event. Well, that's a great answer, man. Um, I did want to ask you just an interesting situation here this week with Team Dunstone, where they had to replace a player basically at the last minute and Colton Lott's <laughs> coming in to replace Braden Muscawi. Just from your perspective, how difficult would that be for a team to do at the last minute? Yeah, I think it... Um, you know, it'd be tough. Uh, you'd try to build for, you know, the past two, three years to get to a certain point. Uh, and I think any team would have a tough time uh, plugging and playing. I know that we wouldn't want to have, you know, BJ out of the lineup or John out of the lineup or, or even, even myself. You know, certainly if Kevin was out of the lineup, we could just turn the car right back around. But um, yeah. I think that, uh, yeah, it puts them in a little bit of a, a, a tricky spot. Uh, but, you know, they picked up a really good player, that Colton Lott. He's a stud. I think he's going to be great and seen in the curling worlds for a long time. So, and he has some experience with Matt and, you know, being here with their home crowd, I expect, uh, you know, I don't expect them to, uh, you know, feel sorry for themselves. I think they're going to go out and, uh, and play great. And, you know, they're, they're a good team. So they're one of the dark horses, obviously in this event uh, with whoever they may have had at third. Uh, but certainly you can't look past teams like that aren't the favorites here because any team here if you're not on your a game if you decide to go out and play a b or a c game you're gonna you're gonna get clipped and so uh doesn't matter who it is you got to play really really good so last question you guys were obviously part of the bubble last year the briar mm -hmm. calgary some of the grand slams that was a heck of a long grind for a lot of teams with no fans in the stands <laughs> what's it going to mean to you to go out there for an event of this magnitude and actually have some of that normalcy back fans in the stands and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it, it's the absolute best. I got, I get goosebumps even hearing you say that, you know, the bubble was an experience and that's about all it was, you know, I don't, uh, I don't ever want to go back to those days of playing with no fans and, you know, lock it in your room and the hotel food 24 seven. I mean, uh, we were fortunate enough that we did get to play. We got to play some good quality teams and on some good ice, but, uh, 
it's not what gets the juices flowing for me these days. I mean, coming to these events in Saskatchewan where, you know, I'm from, I'm from Regina. So, uh, you know, I've seen the, the rider fans for 20 years. And I, I, I believe that, you know, being Alberta even now for 10, 15 years, Saskatchewan has the best sports fans in this country. So to be able to have it here in Saskatoon, I think the crowd's going to be buzzing. I know I can speak for all the athletes, not just myself, but to have them back in the building, you know, uh, generating that energy and that excitement for every shot and hear the, hear the roar of the crowd. It's going to be awesome. And yeah, we, we can't wait to get out there, man. Uh, there, uh, you, you realize right away how, how little your sport means when the fans go away. So we're pretty grateful to have our curling fans that support us everywhere we go. And yeah, we're, it's going to be sweet to have them back in there. Well, that's just great. Thank you so much for doing this today, Ben. Uh, great to talk to you and best of luck to you and team Cooley in the Olympic curling trials. For Ben Hebert, I'm Ted Wyman. You've been watching On the Rocks.